Hey everybody, Grimmels here with another video and this time taking another look at Steel Armor Place of War. I always planned on doing more Steel Armor and promised to do so since a while, but I did not get around to play a lot of it recently. As I was looking into some other games new to the channel as well, but now I got some more time to play more of it and I want to do some more videos of this tank simulator. Now, to get back into things, I played a few missions from a T-62 campaign I started in the past and I figured I'd show you some of the gameplay from that. I think about maybe starting a new campaign to show one from the start a bit more detailed, if there's an interest. We will see. But for now, let's take a look at the campaign mission from the Iran-Iraq war. This mission is a bit further in the campaign and we are on the defensive, defending against an enemy attack. Now, in this campaign, the enemy armored units are well equipped with Chieftain Mark V tanks. Head on clashes are a dicey proposition against those, as I have learned in my last video I made of the T 62. So, I will play defensively and also try to get into the enemy flanks if I can. So, let's take a look at the deployment in this battle. I will pause here for a second to go over my units. I've got a good number of tanks in this mission, 6 tank platoons from the Dance Armored Brigade, but just 3 tanks per platoon though, as they have taken casualties previously. And I can deploy them in the territory held by me, the red one, while the enemy can deploy his units in the blue area. Now, one platoon, Alpha 1, is stuck in in a prepared defensive position, so hull down. If units stay in its position long enough on the strategic phase map, it can dig in and then fight from a prepared position in the operational phase here. Only Alpha 1 can do this in this mission though. So, my idea is to deploy Alpha 1 the furthest in front, because it has the best protection, in the middle of the map, where I expect an enemy deck from. And, by the way, the enemy does not necessarily feel compelled to stick with the nice blue arrows in this attack. Now, platoons Bravo 2 and Charlie 2 are set up north of Alpha, a little bit further back, not dug in, but at least somewhat concealed. I am hoping that the enemy attack will come from the front and see the less vulnerable Alpha first and concentrate on them, while the better concealed but not dug in Bravo and Charlie 2 can then attack when the enemy forces are already busy with Alpha. The best outcome would be if the enemy push towards the objective advances further towards the duck in Alpha 1 and Bravo and Charlie can fire in their flanks and weaker side armor before they are spotted. Now, Bravo 1 is to the southeast of Alpha to secure Alpha's flank and react to a possible attack from the southwest. And last but not least, Charlie 1 and 3 are positioned behind the defensive lines for two reasons. First, it is in theory possible for an enemy attack to come all the way from the north, as the enemy can deploy his units everywhere in the blue area. Though I don't think that is too likely. The second reason is for those two to move forward and take the objectives Village and Darius 3 and then maybe flank an enemy force from the north, if they attack in the middle. Well, that's the plan and the deployment phase. Let's take a look at some action from this mission. Now, there was no big attack right away and I can't spot anything right at the start of the mission and I start to move Charlie 1 and 3 towards the north, while keeping an eye on things from the hatch of Alpha 1 1 at first. There's nothing inside of Alpha Platoon at first, but Charlie 2 soon reports spotting an enemy unit, so I switch to Charlie 2 1. But it's just the M113 APC though, coming down from the north, passing in front. Maybe a scout unit, I'm not entirely sure. But in any case, the APC is dispatched quickly by the three D62s from Charlie 2, which managed this impressive victory not entirely surprisingly without friendly casualties. However, the enemy now knows of the position of the Charlie 2 tanks, and I would have liked them to stay hidden till I have heavier units inside. A lesson learned for future missions, set the tanks to hold fire when you want them not to give their position away, but I don't know what, if anything, the AI will actually do with this information of some of my tanks being here. For now, anyway, there are no further enemy contacts for a while, so I take control of one of the tanks that have now reached the village to the north, and not meeting any resistance there or any evidence of enemy troops, I start to advance with them towards the objective Darius 3 to eventually build a solid line with Charlie 2 to the south. And should there be no enemy attack, eventually start an attack of my own. Since I saw so little enemy resistance so far, I started to suspect that there isn't much of a real attack going on here and there won't be many enemy units. However, eventually Charlie 2 again reported sighting an enemy unit, a tank this time, followed by other platoons reporting contacts, so I switched to Charlie 2 1 again. 
And indeed, as soon as I do so, I can spot an enemy tank, a chieftain, pretty close, and I switch to my gunner to engage him. And the chieftain is moving from north to south in front of us. Apparently the tank has not spotted us yet and is showing us his sight and I figure I have time to aim well. But then my loader opens up with his 50 cal. I think the hatch of the enemy tank might have been open, prompting the loader to do this otherwise unadvisable thing. So I rush my first shot trying to get the shot out before the tank turns towards me. I was aiming for the middle of the tank, the fighting compartment, but I had a heat round loaded, not a Sabo as I thought at the time and my round goes a bit low and further back than I had hoped. Still, since we were fairly close I got a hit, which penetrated the engine compartment of the tank, immobilizing it and setting it on fire. The crew of the tank, not liking that too much, got out and I could see them make a run for it. But further behind that one I could immediately spot another chieftain coming inside behind the low ridge line. It's a bit hard to see in the bad weather, but this works in our favor, because in the bad weather the enemy tanks got closer towards us without spotting us, which is good, because with the chieftain's good armor they are difficult opponents at longer range shootouts. Now I have saber rounds loaded and engaged the new targets coming inside. The saber round, thanks to its fast speed and flat trajectory, makes it easy to hit the target with. Useful especially in conditions like this with bad visibility where the enemy tanks are hard to see. We are also somewhat close to the enemy tanks, which increases the Sabre's effectiveness, as they still go very fast at this range. The heat round's penetrating capabilities is of course not influenced by range, but they are harder to get hit with as longer range. Now, there are more and more enemy tanks coming inside now, and it seems they are moving to the northeast, towards objective Darius 3, where Charlie 1 and 3 are heading. I figured they have spotted Charlie 1 and 3 as they were advancing towards Darius 3 in the open and moved to attack them, but they have not seen Charlie 2 in their flank till it was too late, possibly because we were hidden behind the ridge line the first chieftain showed up behind and now the enemy have Charlie 1 and 3 in front of them and 2 in their sights. And in this situation the enemy tanks seem to be unsure on how to react. Which is great for us, because there are more and more chieftains showing up and again, in a head-on fight versus them, they are superior to the T-62, especially at longer ranges where the sabered round, the best anti-tank round of the T-62, loses some of its effectiveness. But in this case we can fire at the thinner side armor of the enemy tanks and up here at least we are not taking any fire yet. Now I am worried a bit though about the two tank platoons to the north of us, Charlie 1 and 3, towards this bush seems to be heading at this time, as they would meet the chieftains head on and without concealment. However, they are still a bit behind Darius 3, the objective they were heading towards when this started, and it does not look like the chieftains are in range to engage them yet, at least they don't seem to fire in this direction as far as I can see. And the number of enemy tanks is apparently going down quite quickly. Only one of the chieftains was suddenly turning in our direction, indicating that he has spotted our tank and was getting ready to engage us. And I focused on this one and managed to knock it out before it could fire in our direction. At this time though, it looks to me like the enemy bush is pretty much stopped and the enemy tanks are not moving anymore. I shoot a few more rounds in the ones that are still showing signs of life and then also fire an extra round into some of the stationary tanks to make sure they are knocked out for sure. And then I take a look around and for now it does look like the enemy tanks are mostly taken care of. And for now at least I can only spot some infantry still up and moving around, though I'm not sure if those are actual enemy infantry units or just tank crew making a run for it. I think the latter. I also start to run low on anti-tank rounds at this point. I don't think I started with a full ammo supply and I was still somewhat low from previous missions. However, this platoon had more often supply than most of the others in this mission. So eventually with the action dying down I open up the map to get a bit of an overview of the situation and also order the two platoons to the north forward to help with the cleanup as there is not too much left for them to run into head on. Which means they can advance forward relatively safely now and also since the enemy tanks were moving east to our right it is possible that some of them have already bypassed us and if that did happen the 6062s to our north from Charlie 1 and 3 can prevent enemy tanks to our north to swing down towards us and attack from our flank which is a theoretic possibility. 
Now, when I do start giving out those orders to the two platoons to our north on the map, I do notice that there's also some more fighting going on to the south, and some enemy units spotted down there, which I missed completely while being busy shooting the chieftains. But since I am pretty busy up here and assuming I'm dealing with the main push of the enemy with all those tanks being here, I don't take a closer look at those units down south for now. When I am back in my tank I open up the commander's hatch to get a better view of my surroundings and when I do so I notice that there are indeed some more tanks to our north, which I missed earlier. There seems to be at least two of them, though they are still advancing towards the objective and not us. But as before, I want to take them out as fast as possible to prevent them from shooting at Charlie 1 and 3, which are now driving straight at them. Since I am very low on Sabre rounds, and those are very easy targets at this low range, I switch to my Heat rounds now, as I would like to save at least some of my Sabre rounds up in case there are more dangerous engagements at longer ranges later, where having Sabre rounds is very useful as they are much easier to get first round hits with, with longer range than the Heat shells. And unlike the M60, the T62 does not have a ballistic computer to help out with this either. It does have a gun stabilizer though, which the M60A1 and turn does not have. I still had the sabre round in the tube, which I fired at the rear chieftain as it comes in my sight, and the tank stops, being most likely knocked out, but since I want to make sure, I shoot it a second time once my heat round is loaded, hoping to set the tank on fire. I don't, but it's not moving anymore either. Now, there was a second one I saw earlier, but I can't see him anymore now. It seems he is hidden behind some shrubbery I was using as concealment, so I order my tank forward and run the shrubbery over to get a better field of view. And I can spot the second chieftain right in front of the first one. He looks knocked out already, but again, to make sure I fire at him with two more shells. Since I have the luxury of not having more threatening targets at the moment, I would like to set them on fire to make sure they are knocked out, and that way they are more easily distinguished from not knocked out tanks, should there be more of them later. The chieftain that was driving in the rear blows up when I hit it again with a heat round, and then I fire one more round in the one in front as well. I don't set this one on fire though, and I don't want to spend all my shells trying to do so either, so I give up on that, and instead I turn out with the commander again to gain some situational awareness and get a better picture of how things are looking at the moment. Again, at this point I still assume all the tanks were attacking to our front or our northwest towards Darius 3 to our north, so I I am a little surprised when I look to the southwest and I also see tons of knocked out tanks in that direction, as well as some that are still active and apparently attacking our tanks further to the south. Since those attacking tanks I saw to the south were about to be masked by the rain and we don't seem to have much threats anymore up here north, I order my tanks forward to keep the enemy tanks in the south in sight and get in their flanks to engage them from the side. Now, my gunner saw something to the west and points the turret there, but it seems to be just infantry. Now, looking around with the commander's binoculars to scan for targets, the scale of the carnage becomes pretty clear. I have never seen this many knocked out chieftains before when playing this game. Now, the tank I saw moving to our south blows up before I get a chance to fire on it, and I can't see another one active at this point, so I again quickly take a look at the map and a closer look to what is going on to the south. By the target markers on the map indicating spotted enemy units, I can see that the push to the south was as strong as the one further to the north, or maybe even stronger. But luckily this push seemed to have been aimed directly at the duck in Alpha 1 platoon, which was hull down, and when the enemy units advanced towards Alpha 1, Bravo 2 platoon between Alpha 1 and our Charlie 2 could fire in their flanks just like we did with the enemies advancing towards Charlie 1 and 3 which surprised me immensely. The enemy advancing directly towards Alpha 1 and Bravo 1 shooting in their flanks is exactly what I was hoping would happen, but this is the first time the enemy actually plays ball and is nice enough to stick to my plan. There are two more tanks advancing and I engage them, but now it seems the fight is really about over. Being the focus of the enemy attack to the south, Alpha 1 took some casualties and lost one tank and one more is heavily damaged and out of the fight, but considering they were directly in the way of the enemy push with only three tanks, that's a very decent outcome. Now I sent Bravo 1, the platoon protecting Alpha south on flank forward around Alpha 1 to attack enemy units in front of Alpha from the other side. But by now the fight really does seem to be over. 
there was one more tank I can spot, but he is retreating back west. And I order my tank into pursuit when I spot this last tank retreating, hoping I can catch some more enemy tanks on the retreat, but there aren't any more. We pretty much knocked out everything. Now, this was probably my most successful mission yet in this game, and admittedly also a bit of a turkey shoot, but I think with the weather and all the explosions also quite atmospheric. And make no mistake, even though it might not look like it in this mission, engaging enemy tanks can be pretty dangerous, especially chieftains. In this mission though, as in many others in this campaign, we had the weather on our side, and of course the fact of being on the defensive and firing from concealment. With the bad weather increasing the effectiveness of said concealment and our tuck in tanks. Which is, by the way, in line with what happened in the real fight this campaign portrays, where the T-62s also managed to take a heavy toll on attacking chieftains, fighting from concealed and prepared positions in bad weather. Well, the last enemy tank that was alive is soon knocked out or retreating, so this is it for this mission. I think it was a nice one to get back into things, and I think I will do some more steel armor content in the near future, as I was planning on doing anyway when I first started with this game. Now, since this campaign is almost over, I might show some more missions from it till it is, and then, as I have said, I think about maybe making a new campaign and show it a bit more in detail from the start, with the turn-based strategic phase also there, if there's interest, so let me know. I'm not sure yet if it's the T-62 or M-60A1. Well, and this is it for this video. As always, I hope this was entertaining, thanks for watching, and maybe I'll see you next time.